Okay, I have been messing with this machine a bit now. I have been testing the different sounds. And the only way to do that is to turn down the volume of all the sounds except one. Go through the presets and find the preset that contains that sound. And uh, then you can check whether it's present or not. And uh, all of the sounds seem to work except for one. And it's astonishing. It's the cowbell is gone. And uh, this is very, very, very terrible news. Uh, we we need more cowbell. This is uh, this is uh, clear. There are some trim pods here, which that and then the trim pods allow you to um, manipulate the gain on that particular um, drum sound. And if you turn it up all the way, you get some uh, overdrive or feedback. And, it would be an idea to change out the electrolytics, but I don't see any electrolytics that look really bad and discolored and blown. But all sounds work except for the cowbell. Yeah, it's upside down. Um, That's the power transformer. Um, there's a big capacitor here that may contribute or not to the noise level, but as you can see, most of the, uh, most if not all of the resistors are carbon comp resistors in the old style and very prone to noise. So, it's maybe not an idea to change out all of them but maybe some of the biasing resistors uh, like this I think it's 2k2 like this one here seems a bit discolored and the same is true for this one it's probably connected to the power supply for the transistors here Transistors are BC 208. BC 208. Make it like. Look for a replacement. There are also these metal cap transistors. And they are. Yeah, BC 108B. Every instrument, or better, every drum sound has its own volume control. So you can adjust the volume of the bass kick and the volume of the cymbals. And uh, there are all these potentiometers here. And an idea would be to trace out um, the signal from this point, for example. We can tell this is the Let's see, long symbol. So here we have long symbol on this point, and then try and trace this. I'm sorry. Yeah, here is the output. Comes from this log, and I could put here, put use my multimeter and see where the continuity uh, goes from this pot all the way through these wires somewhere to points here in the board yeah well this is sort of how this thing works if you select one sound just turn the volume up on one sound and as you can maybe hear the claves uh, come through no matter what the level is I put on the pot here you can still hear them but here they are There's a volume control here, but then there's also um, sort of a master gain control with the trim pot here. And for the claves, it's this one here. Okay. Whoa, overdrive.
sort of set where they sound best and um, but I'm still trying to debug this thing to get like a little more cowbell and I would have supposed that the cowbell is somewhere in there as well oh there's another trim but, but I'll first have to you first have to find a preset that uses the cowbell uh, so this is a sort of a problem well this here seems to be the trim pod to um, set up the gain for the bass kick this is the trim pod for the gain on the bass pit on the bass kick this is the trim pod for the gain on the bass kick and it's not very loud it's at full full volume and the machine is at full volume as well so if I try to manipulate the gain here It doesn't really increase the volume, you only get like a funky uh, synth type bass. Come on. Oh yeah. So the gain setting on the trim pot is not really what is causing the problem or the bass to be a bit weak. The bass kick at least to be a bit weak. Yoo-hoo! We got the cowbell. It's this little trimmer over here on the board that works. Uh, get in there. More cowbell. Sharper car cowbell. Supersonic cowbell. But it's more or less to tune the tone of the thing. That's a cowbell. Less. More cowbell! <laughs> Gotta have enough cowbell. Well, uh, there's this voltage selector switch which was set to 220. And uh, when I switched it to 240, which is almost exactly what we have as wall voltage here in Belgium, things started sounding a whole lot better <laughs> immediately. And it's quite silent when everything is turned down, when the volume here is at max. So I'm not going to hack into this too much for now. Not at all. Still is this problem that the slider switch, which controls the speed of the drum machine, uh, has broken off. And you can still sort of manipulate the slider if you take a... A pencil or a, a resistor or something but I want to fix this I don't know how difficult it would be to find another slider switch of this size it's 50k 
um, but there's always the option of replacing this start and stop knob which isn't used so take this out and put a 50k pot in this is i don't know what this does i'll have to check whether there's at all continuity between these two points if there is then we'll wire these two uh, wires together if there isn't we'll isolate them and put them out of the way well, first I couldn't get this to move without putting uh, some sort of uh, knob on it, an old geloso knob with two screws, very solid. But uh, the switch is very stuck, it's, uh, I have to put some uh, oil in. But the question is, I first I thought this wasn't working at all and I thought about putting the pot to regulate the tempo here. Because I don't have slider switches like this. Um, well, um, but this is actually kind of handy. We should keep it. Uh, two, three, four. Always stops on the red. Okay, I changed all the knobs. So all of the sounds are usable as well as the start and stop function and the volume knob. But uh, the slider switch is still... Uh, giving me a headache um, I think it's 50k I even hacked my Behringer uh, mixer, mixer to check whether uh, the slider switches in there were 50k they were not they were 10k uh, so we'll have to find a different solution and what I want to do is we have this start and stop knob which is only With a lot of force will it move and a special knob with two screws in them. It's very tight. I want to use this position as a speed control. Put in a potentiometer right here, 50k. And that will control the speed of the rhythm box. Then the start and stop function, I will move it to a smaller toggle switch. Chuck, chuck, chuck. That will be much easier to use. Well, this is always a bad idea, but I learned something today. It's a bad idea because you always have these exposed wires. And it's, yeah, it's of course a point where at which the plug can break. But if you want to connect like this and you have to do it, don't strip the wires. Just feed them into the holes, plastic and all. And then screw down the little screws piercing through the plastic insulation and that's the way to attach them these things were not made for people who've got wire strippers on hand uh, they were meant to be very fast so don't leave any copper exposed like here just cut it off feed the plastic in and pierce through the plastic with a screw yeah great invention in dutch we call them sugar sugar cubes I don't know what the name is in English. Cry Diana. Cry Diana. Such a cry Diana. Baby, won't you come on in? Boy, you little gin. You got a thing, those bitches in the sink. Cause I don't think you're getting better than me. Cry Diana.